Right now? Well, now you are. I think your dancing was cut out. Oh, all right, well, I'll dance more later. Okay, hey, it's Valerie uh, from Valerie Wallace Fine Arts, and I'm here in my basement studio in Orno, Maine, 0473, and it's 8 o'clock on Friday, July 3rd, which is my and my lovely husband's 22nd anniversary. My lovely husband. My lovely husband. The day before the Fourth of July. And today we're going to draw a loom, and you can draw it with your pastels, your crayons, your pen, your pencil, um, your blood, I mean, whatever you want to do it. Okay, I am going to start drawing this with a gray. Okay, I know it's black, but the, the gray will blend in, and I might make some mistakes, and I don't want, to, I want to be able to cover them up, and it's hard to cover up mistakes if you make them in black. Okay? Um, this is the deal with the loon. Okay? The loon has a fat neck. Okay? <laughs> and stripes on it. So don't make a skinny little neck because you won't have room to get the stripes on it and um, you'll be like, something's weird about it. Obviously, a bird, the bird can lift its neck up and bring it down a little bit. So sometimes it could be a little bit longer. You're not gonna be right or wrong if you make it a little bit longer, okay? But it needs to be relatively thick. Same thing with the back here. This is pretty much just kind of a rainbow shape. What's going on is kind of in this one, a little bit of the wing that's on one side, like kind of the shoulder, and then a little bit of the other one. So they're two sort of separate pieces there. Yeah, whether or not you do that is not that big a deal, okay? Um, I'll show you this again, but the head is pretty big, okay? If I measure the size of the head, in this case, it's as big as the body. So if you wind up with a little pin head and a skinny neck, it's not going to look as much like a loom. You'll just have to fatten it up, okay? <laughs> There's just this option where it's like, Mella Wallace is watching, and then you can hit bring them on camera. And I'm just imagining if I tried to bring Grammy on camera. Like it's a little window? Or I think like so. just full screen? I'm not wash sure. Melodrama I'm not little, sure. But I just, can you imagine the room. confusion? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do it. When, I, when we're painting this, the first thing we do is we draw this line here, and then we draw this hump on here. But because we're drawing and we don't want that lines to show through in the wrong places, we're going to have to do the line here and then we're going to work from here and then we're going to add this part. Okay, so first thing, starting with the gray, um, it's a little bit top to bottom. This is a little bit below midpoint. So if I go top to bottom, I find the midpoint, I'm going to go a little bit lower and what I'm going to do is draw a line that comes across. Okay? Um, you know, it's about the bird, so don't make too tiny. You know, there's a little space out front. And you need to have space for a nice big beak. So I was going to say beard. So just give yourself a pretty good amount here. And then, you know, the back, it doesn't really matter. You just need a little bit of black tail feathers. But give yourself a section over here. Unless you're flipping it around in your head because you like to go the other direction, which is fine. Um, all right. And then I'm going to do one in charcoal down here. We'll start over here. There are all these nice um, things on the water. Oh, yeah, it's small on paper. Okay, all right, don't, don't look anywhere except here. Oh, you may have trouble seeing because it's a white little bit here against kind of a white sky, okay? But what happens is from here, it basically kind of just tilts back, only instead of making it like just a straight line that would make it pointy, there's a little curve to it, okay? Um, so, so kind of, uh, maybe you want to start here, but you're just going to kind of curve this like that. What's that like? The front of a the front of the toe of a shoe, right? I like that. Sure. Okay. All right. It's not a long way, but you know, obviously, like I said, the bird can move, so it's not that big of a deal. Whatever the height you have here, that's about how much the second half of the neck is. A little bit less. So if I go from here to here, then that means I'm going to about here. So I'm going to bring it up to about here. Okay, so kind of like that. Can you see it? Yeah. I don't need you on my TV. <laughs> good yeah. To, good to know the eyes are working. Okay, now, I'll go down here. Let's see. Okay. Don't look anywhere except the front of the head. What's this shape right here? Triangle. Yeah, do you see it? It's like an equilateral triangle, kind of. 
<sighs> okay. <laughs> Any collateral, huh? Well, like it's from very... here, here, and here, that would be pretty much an equilateral triangle. It's just a really good word. Is it? I wouldn't have thought of that. I'm, I'm into geometry. Which, well, you know, maybe you don't have to do this, but I think I'll show you from the here. Okay, so this, the width of this part is equal to the first section. Okay, so say I go here and I measure this. All right, I'm going to go right <coughs> here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a dot right here. Watch me for a second and it'll make sense. Right to here. I'm going to draw a line that comes down. I'm going to make a spot right here and I'm going to make an equilateral triangle like this. Okay? The beak is going to come from inside here but it's going to come out a little bit more. The beak is as long as, yeah, the, tr the triangle piece. So I'll measure that. That's that. Looks like a, looks like a, um, a snake with a Sticking out tongue. Okay, now we're here. We need to add this bump on the back. So you're going to go like this, bring that around, and bring it down. Down to here. It's that far. Okay, and that, it's black. <coughs> so if you make it too small, it's easy to fix and make it bigger. Um, it is. You know, let's see, this direct, this much of it is the same size as the beak. So, like, whatever is here is here. It's kind of like that. Is that making sense? Is that too many, too many, uh, too much geometry? No. This chair is really not setting me up for ergonomic success. Well, get a different chair because I probably have 14 in this room. Because I need to, I need to often see my many guests from my painting glasses, which I do not need to do right now. All right. So the neck. This is one of the things that's happening too. Is that I mean, you probably got this on here, but this neck at this point does kind of come forward just a little bit. All right. If you brought it backward, it doesn't make that much difference. But if you haven't gotten too far, you can bring that in a little bit. Okay. What makes a moon look like a moon? It's it's, uh, it's head. No, like what you're saying. It's coloring. Yeah, yeah. It's black and white, and it has this gingham pattern here, and it has some stripes on it. So. I mean, that's, you know, once you're doing that, has black head, red eye. I mean, that's, that's a loom. No matter what you do, it's a loom, okay? Right? What else would it be? I mean, it's not a penguin. That's black and white. Mm -hmm. What's another black and white bird? Chicken. Hey. Not that either. Okay. Puffin. Could be a night or duck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, let's do the body. So, like I said, the, in this case, the height of the body... It's the same height as the head, okay? So if you measure right here, and you go over here, that's how high you're gonna go. And right here, what happens is it comes in, and then it goes up a little bit. Shoop, shoop, all right? And then we're gonna bring it out to the back, like this, like a rainbow, and then give it a little flip of the tail. It does look funny, because it's beak is beak. We'll go up a little bit. We'll go out and flip it around. The length of this is, let's see, if I measure the head, one, two, three, a little more than three heads, heads long. So if I measure the head, one, two, three, I'm a little long. Oh, So either what happens is, I can't really make the head smaller, so I can make the, t the body a little bit longer. Okay? There's always something that you can adjust the proportions with. Okay? We're going to leave this. We're going to come back to um, finishing up the bird after we do the background. Okay? I love the colors in this. This is the most important thing about drawing the background here, is that 
Um, you have to make me smile. Because I'm supposed to be smiling. Oh, me? Yeah. That was not placed well in the middle of that sentence. I know that. I know that. <laughs> All right. The most important thing to <laughs> this <laughs> <That's> is, <nice. laughs> is that it has to be light. So I tried a bunch of light <laughs> colors, but I do still need it to be in the greenish world. Okay? But I have to color... Oh, jeez, um... Well, I have to color with this green really, really lightly, and then I need to do what? Veronica? Color over it with white. Yeah, yeah, yep. White is out. White or a gray, or if you are more brighter, you can use a little bit of a pale, pale yellow or whatever, but it has to be light, 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 light. Okay? So, I'm going to have that, and so what I've got is a, a white where I peeled the... Um, Peel the paper off so that I can get it right on its side. Actually, one of the things I want to do first is this, too. The water level is actually here. So we're going to make that line right about here. Okay? Um, it's not that the sky... sky I'm, I'm going to start coloring. So I'm going to do this as lightly as I can up here. It doesn't have to be even, either. This is a nice thing about this watercolor is that, you know, it changes and stuff. Um, but I'm going to try to get that right on its side, too. Okay? Maybe start at the top, that way you can get used to how you're doing it, in case it gets a little dark. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, well, you can obviously make the sky any color that you want. But, you know, maybe what you like about this picture is... Oh, you're trying to do, you're doing green in the, in the background? I didn't realize that. As but, compared to what? I thought we were doing white. <laughs> Well, I'm going to put the white on afterwards, but what, I won't know where to put the white if I do it first. I'll just want to be able to see it. But if I, um, you know, you can put any color that you want, but if you want to learn how to make a real, you know, make your dark colors lighter and how to pull that off so it has this early morning soft quality, then practice it. And if you don't want to, don't. Because usually the one I do is it has a orange and pink sunset. Okay, so I just put a little bit on there and then take my white. Oops. You know, and if you're still drawing the moon, then don't color the sky at all. You know, maybe you just have a different way of doing it. You can do anything you want. Yeah. Yeah. This is a place to do anything you want. Yeah. Something's bumpy. Oh, I think that's good. Oh! I keep Stop throwing, throwing it. Maybe well, that's the two glasses of wine I had. No. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. And then down here, the thing is, whatever you do in the sky, the water reflects that. Okay. It can also be reflecting other things, so you don't have to do the whole thing. But if you notice, right about here around the bird, everything's pretty light. So I'm going to do the same color that I did here. I'm going to use that in the water. Okay. One of the, probably the whole secret to this picture is what happens in the water. And it's not that it has to be done a particular way. It's just if you don't put the reflections in there, doesn't look right and you you could bake the perfectly carefully drawn bird and but if you don't put the reflections in there it's not going to look as good and it's going to seem like something is weird about it and you might not know what it is but somebody will there we go put that on there so okay i'm going to do this with my black down here too much a black and white picture as it is, but if you're trying to figure out how to make your picture be black and white and also lots of shades of gray. And the big hint, if you're trying to learn how to use charcoal, is that you have to have an eraser. I didn't know that there was an eraser when I got 
got my little list of art, art supplies from my drawing class. I didn't know what an, a beaded eraser was, but it is the secret to it all. All how you can make charcoal be fun and beautiful and control what you're doing. Right? Sure. Sure thing. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's do the rest of the water. We'll do the grass and we'll do we'll color in the bird because that's it. All right. So with the the, uh, the other thing I have is it's the same deal, but I have kind of a bluish greenish color that I'm going to use for the lower part here. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put some white with that too. But you have to learn how to not push down too hard, try to be relatively smooth about it, because if you're real scribbly, then um, it will be a little bit distracting. But, you know, that's all right. Not important. I like that. Looking good, kids. If you are drawing tonight and you feel like you want to share your picture with me, that would be really fun. I love that. That always makes me happy. Maybe makes me sometimes just a little bit weepy, but it does make me a happy weepy. Did I ever tell you about the first time I saw my nephew, Charlie? And I met my brother and his wife, Michelle, at the uh, airport, the jet port, the port of the jet port. And... No, I've never heard. You've never, you've never heard this story? Nope. And... Charlie was... He's March, baby, so he was a little more than a year, I guess. I think. I don't think he was... Or was he just six months or something, maybe? Yeah, yeah, he was. He was just that first summer... And they came, you know, not a lot of people or anything. And I see him coming, and I, I see him holding the baby. And I just, like, burst into tears. And my, I remember Michelle walks up to me, and she just goes, I've heard about it, but I never believed it was true. What, that you cry? That people actually cry because they're so happy. <laughs> <laughs> That's not something that she does. She might now, she might now, but she didn't back then, you know. It wouldn't be over. It was baby. cracked me right That's now. what she said. <laughs> it was very true. What? That's funny. Yeah. It wouldn't be over her brother's baby. <laughs> Crying with happiness. Maybe winning her, like, the horse sorting thing or something. Maybe that would work. Okay. The horse All right. sorting. All right, so we're going to do the, the, the grass. And you can do the grass any way that you want to. The hint I'm going to give you is varying how hard you push down. And if you don't think you can do it, then pick a light green and then like a darker green. But if you can do it, um, see how these are a lot thicker and darker, and then these are lighter and lighter and lighter. And see on this one, you almost don't notice it. But if you didn't have it there, you know, it would seem kind of blank out in the front. But it's nice. It gives that quality. But it's very tiny and very light. So if you can do that. Sometimes it's easier to start lighter and then get darker, but... Um, so I'm going to use two shades of green. I'm going to use the two that I used in the water. Huh. How about that, Funny. right? Funny. And the reason why I want to do it now is because I don't want you to have finish the bird and then try to do it. You either are going to get it mixed up in the black or accidentally draw the grass across the back, or you're going to leave a little space. And I don't want you to have a little space, okay? So when you do it, don't be afraid to get right, you know, onto the back of the bird. <coughs> and, you know, you can just start here and push up rather than starting at the top and coming down, okay? That'll make it get a little skinnier and pointier out of the top. I love these little pieces that are bent. So if I go up, I could even have a little piece that went like that. 
and they don't, some are going to go this way, some are going to go this way. Um, maybe something I put on the side of this and get kind of a, a fatter one like that. just some crisscrosses because it's probably kind of thick and you could put a lot on there or you can you know some people will put three perfectly made little strands of grass blades of grass and then some people will put like a hundred you know whatever whatever's your thing because this is where you everybody's style shows And then what I want to do, so there's a few behind his head that are pretty light. So if I can just make some really light lines, maybe we'll just get dark. I mean, so maybe you put a couple that are really close to each other, maybe one spaced out a little bit. Those are things that help to make it a little more natural and more random. So here, do keep in mind the beak. Um, the one thing you don't want are pieces that are right at the very tip of the beak, like you don't want one strain of grass that runs and hits right the front. So you either want it to cross the beak like here, or not to cross it at all. Okay, so I could put one that I know is going to come up here. It's just a supporting role. It's not the real thing. You can make, um, what do you call it, um, cattails. I saw the loon at camp the other day, right in the middle of the day. Paddling around. Okay, let's do it. First thing, get your color, whatever color you want to make the eye. I'm going to make it an orange, because I found that when I made it red, it was so dark you couldn't see it. And, and the, doing the eye, is it big or small? Small. It is pretty small. You can always make it smaller by coloring black around, so don't be afraid to get it big enough. But, you know, the other question is, where is it? So, it's, I guess it's pretty much right on this line, isn't it? That's a little close, but I'm going to put it right around here. Okay, a little bit closer to the top of the head. All right, if you're doing in black and white, then you're just going to have to... I think right now the head seems really round because we think that this triangle is its beak. But it's not going to be. It's going to be its head, so things are going to change a little bit. Um, all right, that being said, I want to put... I, I couldn't make this work all that great, but I, I want to still think a little bit about how this this um, beat comes on its face a little bit here, and there's a little bit that comes from the top and a little bit on the bottom. But keep it pretty narrow. It's going to get bigger when you go to color it more, so better to start small. You can always make it thicker and bigger. I mean, we don't want a, uh, uh, what's it called? Hummingbird beak. Pelican? Oh, hummingbird. Yeah, no, like teeny tiny. Or, um, or like a plover or whatever. Plover? Or that was... What's a plover? It's a little tiny bird at the beach. We just saw him. Well, I didn't the see it. His um, eye wasn't there. You weren't there. Once again. I feel like that is a long beak. Oh, well, that's all right. If it's too long, then I'll just have to adjust and make the rest of the parts bigger. Okay, let's do this. So find what you're going to color in with. I don't like how this white goes to here and then it goes to black. So I'm not going to do it like that. But you can if you want. So I'm going to go right across the bottom of this guy's head like this. And then I'm going to put a black stripe like this. I'm going to do that right now. Okay. And then he has one that kind of comes and dips down just a little bit. And they're all, I've, uh, well, I haven't done a lot of them, but uh, I have done a few and uh, pictures of loons. And the necks are always a little bit different, okay? But you kind of want that striping in there. 
Mm -hmm. It's like a fingerprint. I'm sure it is. Um, Unique to each bed. You know what else is black and white? Cows. Puppies. I, What'd you say? Just paper? Paper and write all over. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. All right. So we're bringing this here, here, around his eye. What was the other one like? I said something to do with a skunk. Black and white. Or a skunk with a skunk. diaper rash. Oh, that's what it is. Something like that. Yeah, something yeah, stupid right. like that. Well, it's not stupid when you're in kindergarten. Well. It's hysterical. Yeah. Because you said diaper. And skunk. It's never ceases to. I mean, that's oh, it's it's what's it. black and white and red all over. Or black and white and and black and white and black, it's a skunk rolling down the stairs or something like that. Something like that. It never that. ceases to amaze me how much fun it is when you say in a certain group, well, with most groups of children of a certain age, and when you say anything that has to do with diapers. <laughs> Huh. And you'd think that a lot of them, like they don't have younger siblings, like they wouldn't even know that much about it, but it just, it creates raucous laughter. Because it's freaking funny. I'm, I mean, I don't have a lot of problems with um, people having gas at my class. Generally, it's like, someone in this room needs to go to the bathroom. There's no laughing about it. Yeah. But when it comes to diapers... Well, no, they don't say that too much. Just those certain ones that you know that shall be nameless. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to draw all this guy in here too. So it's a little thick right at the at the. And it, you know, it's it's not too point. I mean, it's pointy, but it's thicker. But again, start small and then add on as time goes on when you think you are can conclude like how big you want it to be because it does kind of. He doesn't have really much forehead. I think I'm still off on how I'm doing this. It's not very quite right. Oh well, who cares? Again, we know what it is. All right. I don't know about this mouth part. I'm gonna get rid of some of this. Do you know what I mean? Like here. The mouth piece. Yeah. Okay. And give him a little dot in the eye. Their eyes are kind of creepy. Well, a lot of birds have creepy, creepy eyes, right? Yeah. Okay, find something relatively sharp that you can do the stripes with and space them out enough because it will be a bummer if you don't have, if you can't see the lines if they get too close to each other. Okay. If you're doing something and it gets blunted, that and finish the rest of it. I'll do the water and we'll be good. I remember I remember when you guys were in kindergarten, you and Ruby, and you thought saying poopy butts was the funniest thing <laughs> that was ever happened in the whole wide world. And I said to Cameron Coda's mom, Gail, and uh, Kristen Douglas's mom, so they have kids like, I mean, are they always talking about poopy butts and stuff like that? And they both looked at each other and then looked at me and went, <laughs> like my cute little twin daughters are <laughs> very immature. Great. <laughs> I still remember that. That was funny. That was funny too. Okay. Stripe here. Stripe here. Whoops, I went the other way. Hold on, whatever. Okay. So on the the feathery part. I have a hard time believing this is really what it's like, but get 
really just looks kind of like a checkerboard, okay? Um, this, don't forget that this little piece right up front, it stays white, okay? And if you, if you want, what you do is you try, kind of take a little green and you put it over that gray line, and that helps to set the front of it off a little bit. Um, and then you want a smaller black if you can find one to do the lines on there. Whatever you can get that has the relatively this one. But if you make them thick, that's okay too. Because you don't need to be tan in it. Okay. So what happens is this. There's sort of, like I said, there's sort of a piece that's coming kind of here. And there's sort of a piece that's coming here. Okay, and there's a little bit of sort of the feeling that it comes down like this because right here there's just sort of little stripes. So you could do this kind of lightly where there's a little bit of striping right on the, but I, they're not all like this. I mean, when I do the painting, it doesn't look like that. So all of the, line, the black lines here, if you can see them, they all kind of start here and they kind of curve a little bit to the left. They're pretty close together. And then down on the bottom, it's a little thicker and then they get skinnier as they go apart. When we do this with paint, um, we, we draw it and we do checkerboard. Is that what I mean? Checkerboard, grid, whatever. Yeah. And then go back in and we pat in little spots of white on the top so that it really, you get that in there. Um, so it's going to be a little different drawing it. But, um, you know, you don't, it's not something you need a, you know, a ruler to do, okay? I might start right here in the middle and I'll curve them like this. If you can only make them straight down, go for it. All right. And just between the two different wings, you're just changing it, just a whoop, whoop. There, all right. It reminds me of like kids that break their, put their stuff, their paintbrushes fall apart and they're like horrified. They think they broke something. Uh-huh, I would have done that. And then I'll go, look over here <laughs> and I have, 500 paintbrushes or something. Don't worry about it, kids. It's fine. So, if you're if you're super careful or whatever, I guess I don't know. Maybe I am tonight. Who knows? You could you could stripe in each one separate. But if not, you could just go across. I'll do it. I'll do that on the um, charcoal one. And then we're gonna thicken them up down towards the bottom. natural. It shouldn't look like it was drawn with a ruler and straight edge and a protractor. Right? Unnatural. I'm being more careful than I did when I did it earlier. Good for me. Good for me. Good for me. Alright. So here You want to leave a donation there's a link right below or you can go right to my website and you can leave a little donation little old donation if you'd like to but if you can't what you could do instead that would be super great for me would be to share uh, this video or, or something about what I'm doing with somebody that would never see it otherwise because you know Okay, so what I meant is like there's quite a bit, it's quite a bit darker right down in here. So just take your, go right along the water line here. Add a, we need to add a little black to the tail fins. You just kind of think, uh, I don't know, waves 
or something like that. Um, well, this one needs the. There we go. Um, you know, just work your way kind of up a little bit like this along the bottom. It will give it shape, so it's a good idea to do it. And you can get rid of some of the, you don't need to see all of the white as it gets closer to the waterline, okay? They'll mean more if they're up close to the bottom. Right, I'll do that here. Okay, um, I need my, oh, that's blue. Let's see. There we go. Okay, so if you don't see the bird, what you're seeing is that there's kind of a big, the, the, the lines that you do for the water, you want to work horizontally, okay? You don't want to draw lines that go up and down like we did for the grass. These are all going side to side. And you have a little extra black where the, the back of the bird is, and then you have a little black where the head and the, and the um the neck are, and maybe a little bit that goes out for the um, beak, okay? We're going to add another cut, a little little bit of other uh, blue and stuff like that, too, but um, some people go, well, usually only the people that are drinking, but some people really go crazy at this point, and then some people do it a little sparse. It's a little hard to tell, but if you don't do, since we're drawing, if you do a little bit less, and then you look at it for a little while, and you think, I could probably put a little more on, you can always add more, right? Okay, so, but what you're trying to do, if you didn't, if you've already done it, but you're trying to leave a little tiny bit of white between the bird and the, the reflection, or shadow, depending on how you want to feel about it. Okay, and then you can be kind of heavy, a little side to side, you can do it in waves. Anything you do is fine. You just have to have this in here. Okay, so I'm saying that's kind of the back. I'm looking at maybe where the head is. I'm going to put a little black, like about opposite the head. Maybe cheat a little bit out where the beak goes. Okay? Doesn't have to be exact. It's just like a suggestion. Boy, it's dropping in temperature, isn't it? It's like cool air blowing in. <laughs> He's a little top heavy, that's for sure. Yeah, the fat. Yeah, head. Baby Huey one. It's called Lollipop Head. <laughs> ha ha. It is. It used to be like a phenomenon with celebrities. They'd be super, super skinny and would make their heads look huge. They would wear the lollipops. It's like teenagers. Too young. Too young. Yeah. Okay, and then, all right, and then I want to put a little bit with the green and the blue. So, um, if you're going to put a wave here, the, the heavier wave would be down near the bottom of your page, and you might have things a little bit lighter on your way up. But it won't hurt to have a little something on there. This is, a, of course, a watercolor, which actually, I don't do much with watercolors, but a watercolor is a really great um, piece to use to draw from because uh, it's a lot looser and then you realize that you don't have to make it perfect. So doing something from a photograph can sometimes just be really setting you up for frustration. Let's go check the room. There it is. Okay. Um, mine has a very funny face. Look at this one. He's that. very pointy. This is okay, is it? Yeah. yeah. No, All right. So here, what's happening is, do you see like this angle goes up quite a bit more, and I have it drooping down. So I'm going to have to bring my forehead over a little bit and then bring it down so that I can get that shape on there a little bit more. Okay, and then probably add a little bit onto the top of my beak. That helps, right? Right. 
right. Okay, the other place I like a little bit is right here in the front. So he has a little that kind of comes around. Like that. Okay, so a little, there's a little maybe a piece that connects from here and then it kind of goes up. All right, you got him? <laughs> that was huge. <laughs> All teeth, just like that. And if you're lucky, I'll show you our family portrait. If you stay tuned for two more minutes or one more minute, I'll show you. Well, what year is that? Uh, two, 1990. Nine, two thousand. Oh, right. Two thousand one. Two thousand one. Maybe. So anyway, have a nice Fourth of July. Um, and stay home. I know it's hard to stay home. And, you know, whatever. Eat good food or something. Maybe okay. okay. should go to the grocery store. But you know, next year we'll have a really humdinger of a party. Right? Humdinger. <laughs> humdinger. Humdinger. Tracy Monahan, you didn't tell me she was watching. And Sue. Michelle Spencer. Oh, that's nice. Hi, Kim. Hi, De Hi Dennis Cox. Tim. Oh, I didn't know. Julie. Chris McGinnis. I hope you like your. I uh, hope your brother liked his painting. Christina. Oh, who else? Betty. Betty with the farms. Julie. Tim. Oh, how great. Okay, there's mine. Oh, that made me really happy right there. See how excited I get? Can you imagine how excited I get when I see the paintings that you make me? Or the drawings that you make? Yeah, here it is. Oh, can Beautiful. you see it? <laughs> <laughs> Look at this, though, right here. That's cheesing right That's there. So That's cheesing <laughs> hard. There's Tim. I'm cheesing pretty hard, too. Ruby and Veronica are cheesing, but they get those crazy teeth because they're, like, second grade. Okay. Have a happy 4th of July. Bye. There they are. There's my faithful assistants. <laughs> Thanks, you guys.